Okay, welcome back everyone, and we are in part... which part is it? Part 2 of Scenario 3 of Invasion from the Unknown. And today I am going to be fighting Malkashar. Malkashar is an ancient lich, he is a figure from the campaign Descent into Darkness. He's a bit of a badass, um, as you can see. He's got 80 hit points, he's got a touch attack that drains and is also pretty powerful, and he's got a ranged attack that is even more powerful and can take out pretty much anything in one hit. So we're going to have to be careful when we're fighting him. Uh, should mention at this point that this is the fourth time I've tried to record this segment. The first time I defeated him beautifully and uh, didn't have the sound on, so I had to redo it. Um, second time and third time I got killed in unlucky ways towards the end of the mission. So let's hope that none of those things happen this time and that this will all work out according to plan. First things first, over here there is a necrophage. The necrophage is going to come out and attack whatever I do um, and if I leave it it will probably attack my Avenger. I don't want it to do that. So instead I'm going to step it back one step and it'll come out and attack my hunter. That's fine, the hunter may well die, but that isn't really an issue because it's not the most powerful of units and I probably wouldn't recall it anyway. Over here, right, first of all there's a door to open and behind this touch plate is a bottle of holy water. I won't read out the message. Holy water makes your melee weapons arcane until the end of the scenario so it makes them better at fighting undead. So, Detea, what I want you to do now is walk... First of all, pick up the item, yes. And then walk backwards. Now, as for the rest of you, you guard against these skeletons, see if they come out and uh, play around. You come and stand there. You can come and stand behind him. Now, Anlinde can't quite make it to this skeleton, so I'm going to send in the marksman instead, and the marksman is going to do some damage. Soften him up a bit, I hope. Everyone else can pretty much just walk on by. So, Kalelalel the hero. Now, one thing that you notice if you go up this way is that there is a revenant there. Uh, it will be useful to fight that revenant in a bit, but first things first, Kalelalel, step backwards and get those last two points of health back. Finally, everyone else from the back move up. Here we've got Vemir, who is our little elven civilian mascot. He doesn't cost me any money, but he's also not hugely effective. Alright, amazingly... Oh, let's see what happens here. Okay, so taking stock, Quosor took a bit of damage, not a whole lot. Um, this Elvish Hunter didn't take any damage at all, which is quite frankly miraculous. And um, now it's a question of getting rid of the Elvish Avenger. And I'm going to do that by sending the Avenger around... Sorry, getting rid of the Necrophage. I'm going to do, try and do that by getting this Necrophage around here. <laughs> Dealing a bit of damage. Not enough damage, unfortunately. Um, Elva one or the Elvish Hunter, you can try and get the slow in. <coughs> nice, and now hopefully Ninimiel, the archer, can finish the job. Or maybe, no, maybe Remand. Remand, the Elvish fighter, can finish the job. That makes more sense because then you will become a hero. Hmm. You need to get three hits. Can you do that? If you can't, you'll be either dead or very close to a level, so pretty good either way. There we go, he gets the kill, and there he levels up to a hero. We don't really need any more captains, so the choice of hero from this point onwards is, is a pretty straightforward, straightforward one. Ninimiel, um, you can... Hmm. Now, if Malkashar comes down here, he might kill my Avenger. Uh, I'll take that risk. 
In the meantime, I need to mop up the units that are down at this end. And the best way of doing that, you, Druid, try and... Ah, uh, no, you can't quite do enough damage for that. Kuozor, you only need one hit, so you do it. There we go. Now you're also relatively close to a level as well. We've got a skeleton here on 21 health. And my marksman can come in. And miss with all but one attack. Yep, that sounds good. And then, finally, the Tay of the Prowler ought to be able now to almost get the kill. Or not. Um, well, Detea is in for some beatdown, but should be able to survive that, I think. Meanwhile, Anlinde is going to take down this guy. Kalalalel, you go up here, and then you can lure out this revenant. And in doing so, you can get some healing in. Well, you can get some healing afterwards. You sneak around behind. You go up there. You stay where you are for now. You're quite fast. And let's see what happens. There are still some skeletons down here, but otherwise things are opening up. I might leave Quasar to deal with this and bring up Anlinde to deal with the Revenant. Um, the Revenant not quite dealt with. Kalelelel, you come out and attack this skeleton archer. And then this Revenant now is on 11 health, so someone else should be able to get the kill. But who? Uh, let's try it with the Druid. Perfect. That was risky, but it paid off. Now... Galas, you need to advance. Uh, Lenard, you could do with advancing too. You just go in there and you could even, if you get really, really lucky, take out this skeleton archer. But let's let Vermeer get an experience point. Nice work, two hits. Now, Lenard. Oh, Lenard, you haven't been training hard enough, have you? and the Skeleton Archer is left on 6 hit points, which means it will probably kill Vermeer next turn. Galas, move up. Up here now we can see a Soulless. They're not very nice. I'm going to move El Valwanor up here. This may seem like a silly thing to do, but I think it's useful to lure out some of Malkeshar's guards at this point, because there are two soulless here and a Bane Bow, and the Bane Bow is nasty. But if it range attacks the Elvish Hunter, then I have a chance to slow it on the return strike. Everyone else, stay where you are. Oh no, you can move up a little bit. Everyone else stay where you are for now. Down here... Hmm. Quoso, you need to come and get healed. Now you, Sharpshooter, ideally also need to get healed, but there's not enough space. You can run away though, and you... And just uh, if I go this way, you'll be able to get to the sharpshooter that way. 
My, my only choice is to stay where I am, really. Well, at least now that skeleton archer is not going to be dealing much damage. Well, everyone missed. Gets the kill, you go, my son. All right, now someone useful like Galas can now come and kill the Banebow, or at least get a ton of damage in on it. Good, good, very good. And over here. You get in a slow. Now you, if you kill the Bainbow, will get a level, but it's unlikely, I think. Can you get some damage first and then... yeah. It doesn't really matter if my level 1 units don't make it at this point. I think um, it's not 100% crucial. They can die, especially since I won't be recalling them with that amount of experience anyway. So, this is goodbye, I think, Nynemiel. I shouldn't speak too soon. Okay, the Bainbow is still alive, but only just, and it should now be possible for Leonard to finish it off. And level up, and become a hero. Glorious. Now, Kalelalel can actually reach Malkashar. But I need someone to take out this skeleton so everyone else can get through. Damn it. Okay. <clears throat> everyone move forward slowly. At least now you can get some healing. And you can come up, I think. Yeah, you're more use up here. I don't really mind if you go and heal, and if you try and attack Deter, you will probably die. But I still have these units on the flank, and they can get into position to annoy Malka Shah. Or they could go in and do a little bit of damage to. Yeah, let's take let's take that option. Let's slow this soulless. Now, like I say, not too fussed about the fates of these units in the grand scheme of things. Uh, now, no one can get close, which means that you can safely go to that house and gain a little bit of health. Alright, let's see how it goes this time. I have not employed this kind of magic in a lifetime, but as our young leader said, we do not have much of a choice now. What? What is this curse? Ah, yes. Now... R.I.P. Our elvish hunter friend, but did do something very useful. Oh, I thought it was useful, but no. All he managed to do was slow Malkashar, and Malkashar seems to be mysteriously unslowed. I thought that was something that happens only at the beginning of their own turn. Evidently, I was wrong. Okay, so. You're too slow to get in anyway. You get the kill on the skeleton, and everyone else can rush past. Where rush equals move gradually. So now we can. We've, we've not got anyone quite fast enough to do any more slowing, so I think probably the best bet now is to stall Malkashar. 
Uh, unfortunately, stalling Malkashar does usually require the sacrifice of some units. Um, but Galas, you go round to try and kill this skeleton archer. Oh! Ooh, there's a chest over there. Can anyone reach it? No, it'll be three turns. Too slow. Sad, sad, but uh, but true. Okay, any level one unit or level two unit should be able to stall Malkashar, and anyone who comes here and fights this guy will be in for it. So, who's more useful? Um, quick and intelligent. You're not great, are you? Um, you just come here. And then you, Leonard, try and get the kill. <laughs> and fail. But now that means we can put someone, probably one of these archers, in Malkishar's little chair. Everyone else, run. 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 I'm not pushing them within a tile of Malkashar, because he can kill him if I do that, and I think only Lenard um, is the one for that. You, well, whatever. You see if you can go and... If Malkashar manages to survive another round, you can see if you can get this treasure. You can go round to get into position for next time. As can you. And you. And finally you. You might be the key to this whole plan. Alright, goodbye Romans. It was nice knowing you. Goodbye Lenard. It was nice knowing you too. Now all of that was ultimately very predictable. Um, I can try and get some easy experience for some more of my people. You try and get the kill here. Yeah, there we go. You're doing well. Okay, three points away from a level. Now everyone else, fortunately this corpse is level zero so it doesn't block my attacks. What I really want now, I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. I want this guy to get in slow and to not die. It's slightly unlikely, but I think it's worth the try. That was pretty jammy. I will take it. I should now be able to finish this off, I think. Again, dangerous saying things like that. Um, you, Lemael, go in there and try and do some damage. Now again, Malkashar is a bit of a beast, but uh, the good thing about attacking him from range is that his ranged attack is not a healing attack, unlike his other attacks. So now you, this archer with almost no experience, are going to take one for the team. Perfect. And maybe you, other archer with very little experience, could also take one for the team. Um, but I don't think it's even necessary, you know? I think you can go and take out this walking corpse. Ok, 
Kalalalal can run in there, try and take out this one. And everyone else is free to go for the big bad. Now, Galas, you go and stand on Malkashar's chair and stop him from getting to it. Um, maybe you can even get the KO. Although, no. Let's try something else. Let's tr let's see if Quosor can do it. Quosor is the original fighter that we recruited in the first mission, who even talked to us a little bit, and um, might be able to at least set up Malkashar to be knocked down. Beautiful. You go up there. See two treasure chests. Ah, oh, it's so frustrating that I don't have one more turn. Can't quite reach. It's tempting to wait, but but nah, but nah. It's time for Anlinde to strut her stuff and hopefully get a cool. Ooh, how much is it? Thirty-two experience points. If I'm lucky. <laughs> I cannot believe it! How can it be? I have been defeated. My long battle against the orcs is lost. What are you waiting for, elf? You are a relic from an era long gone, Malkashar. Or should I say, Malin Kashar? The one who fell to the darkness, fighting a noble cause with tainted means. Your life story has served as a cautionary tale for an eternity and you are now the unliving proof that the glories of the Golden Age are dead. Yes, destroying you would rid this ruined land of a threat that pales in comparison to what roams above the surface as we speak. Although I have to admit that the notion of allowing those fiends to fight you is more than a little amusing. It's a pity that your existence is a crime against nature that we cannot let go unpunished. I sense hesitation in your words. Why is that? Does your kind still remember what Wesnoth did to us all? Wesnoth? The name of an empire long dead. It's not important. Are you not curious about what has transpired in the expanse it once covered? You came to me fleeing a mighty foe. Did it come from those lands? South of the swamps of dread and west of the Silverlands? That is not important. I know many things. I know your kind always punish necromancers for disturbing the dead. You thought us the foulest evil imaginable, but you were wrong. I have seen and learned of things that even I would consider abominable. For all this eternity after the fall, I have been haunting the sands by night, slaughtering orcs in their sleep, and hoarding every piece of information I can gather about the new empire that has arisen amid the, amidst the debris of the past epoch. Alas. You have waited long enough to end this, and it's rather unmannerly of me to keep interrupting you. Go ahead, finish me once and for all. No. What do you know, Necromancer? Tell us. It was a few centuries ago. A malign shadow emanating from the vast ocean covered the lands, and an evil presence infected every living creature. Humans from the coastal regions began raiding and destroying what human, elvish, and orcish settlements they could find that would not join them in alliance. In time, they would bring new allies from beyond this world. Demons. Your people still remember them, don't you? We... our sages do, but... how can this be possible? The Demon Lord was vanquished by the Lady of Light long ago. Lady of Light? Ah, but that was a mere foretaste of our doom. Something, or someone, apparently opened a portal, a new one, to the very heart of Inferno, unleashing the forces of evil and allowing them to cross the barrier dividing our realm from theirs. This may have been done from our world, or it may not. Arrogant, unscrupulous magi cast us into this chaotic future before, when they raised the two unnatural suns, after all. But yes, the humans are building a new empire of blood and destruction, and from what I gather, you are the victims of its northwards expansion. Then these caves are definitely not safe anymore. We need to escape. But supposing we can, for how long will we be able to avoid our enemy? You would be killed, tortured, or converted by them in a matter of hours. Perhaps minutes, even seconds. You are few to their many and lack the power necessary to combat the demonic hordes. Not even I have that fabled power. 
but I care little about it. I do not fear an end to my undeath. I have nothing left. All that I once loved has been scoured away by pitiless time. Unlinde, what is the point of fleeing from those fiends to a new and safe home like cowards if they will surely find us again? For how long can we delay our downfall? Why are we not fighting the enemy? Our kin tried before, Gallus, and we became the witnesses to their failure. We have no aid or craft that they did not. Perhaps this will interest you. The wielders of the Union did not die after that catastrophe you insist on only vaguely referencing throughout this conversation. Have you all forgotten that they roamed Erdia for many centuries before, even exceeding the notorious lifespan of your kind? The Union? Your elder druids and sorceresses should remember that this Lady of Light did not save you from that evil unaided. What won your victory was nothing else than the power of the Union, at hands of the Master of Darkness and the Lady of Light, a human and an elven lady. And you should remember that they were blessed, or cursed, with eternal life. Some sources say they descended deep into the very heart of the world and vanished into eternal slumber. It is said that the bright presence of the Lady of Light still radiates from the Earth, where the two figures of legend now lie dormant. Some claim to have followed them before they both disappeared. If my memory still serves after all this time, I would probably be able to pinpoint their location if I had the chance to approach that region. Would you be willing to lead us there? What? But my lord, he is a leash, a necromancer. We cannot have such an abomination on our side. Times have changed, and so have our needs and methods. If Galas thinks the Necromancer can help us find the power that can protect the remains of our civilization. <laughs> yes, yes, I may be able to help you, as long as you abide by my conditions. And what would those be? Protection is all I want. Some of us might oppose this. My lord, please think this through. What do you think, Gallas? You have lost everything. Well, mostly. I lost everything too, except for my unfinished business with the Orcs, and this knowledge that could be placed at your service on these very simple terms. It's your decision to make, young boy. I accept. And there we are. Well, fourth time's the charm, as they say. A um, little embarrassing, but uh, that's the first time I've really cocked anything up too badly in this campaign. We will be back next time, and I will be playing Scenario 4.